We're about to learn how to off skate. On the way right now to an aquascaping demonstration. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to leave with a new aquarium today. Uh, this is Nature's Aquarium where they actually do have the freshwater tank that I want to pick up. So, uh, I just, the space guys, the space is a real issue right now. I'm trying to move out, I'm trying to get, you know, a house that we could just fill up with fish tanks all over the place. But this market is crazy. It's pretty crazy. We made it. Hello, puppy. So this is a freshwater aquascaping video because as most of you guys know, I am looking to get a freshwater setup pretty soon. Let me let me show you guys the tank I'm looking to get. Here it is. Boom. This is the tank that I'm looking to get pretty soon. And uh, yeah, I just think it would be really cool with the uh, waterfall and the mist and kind of like a little, you know, effect going on. This isn't the tank that they're using though for this aquascaping demonstration. It's a little different. This is the tank that they're gonna be aquascaping. Oh, that's pretty cool. Look at the back wall. It's got like little pegs on it already for, I'm sure we'll find out what in a second. Hello. These guys are so chill. That one's cool. It's like a little red and blue. I have to throw some of these guys in there. They're still working on the saltwater side, so that's why I haven't, haven't came back for the full tour yet. Oh, they got the, uh, they got some more inverts here. Chicka, 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 chicka. Look at this guy. I've been wanting to put another starfish in the uh, nano tank now that it's more established and there's a bunch of stuff in there, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet. That one's a little darker than I would want to go. I, I kind of like the bright orange one that I had in there when I first set up the tank. But this is the tank that they're going to be putting in coral. And from what I understand, it's going to be leveled like low light, mid light, and high light. So this will be cool. He said it just finished cycling, so we should be able to come back in a few weeks once they get the coral shipment in and, and check out what they got. Wow, that fish is pretty. So sick. More saltwater fish over here. That oh, one's pretty too. Gotta have the clownfish. Ooh, that that one's cool looking. Yellow-eyed coltang. That's a chunky boy too. Feeding time. Oh, they get excited. Mm-hmm. Yes, they like their food. <laughs> It is a live plant demonstration, so I don't know if he's already picked some or if they're going to come over here. I'm assuming here he picked some, um, but they have a big variety of plants, so tons and tons of options. Maybe they'll do some of these bigger ones in the back since that wall is so big. I don't know. I've never done a demonstration like this. We did have one at Skelly Fest. If you guys were at Skelly Fest, maybe you guys saw it. Maybe you attended. Maybe you got one of the free tanks. Who knows? But um, I actually was too busy at the time, so I didn't get to go into the workshop and kind of learn anything. So. I'm going to be learning a lot of stuff today. Check out this fog machine. If you look around, boom, boom. Look at it. This tank is pretty cool too. It's like super natural. I like how the little like mossy stuff goes in between the cave and then there's this little baby fish. They have so many tanks, uh, nature systems. They got all different sizes, crazy. Oh, look at this. They got a little bridge in there. Sick. That's cool. It's like a super shallow tank. I was never that kid that sat in the back of the classroom. I want to learn if I got to be here, you know what I'm saying? So we are front and center. Boom, we're learning today, baby. He's prepping all the plants over there, putting them through what looks like a piece of foam board or something. I'm sure we'll learn what that is. I'm, uh, I think that is going to go right into those pegs on the wall right there. Let's see if I'm right. My tongue keeps bending over and it's pissing me off. Also, this tank, I feel like it's the size of salt water we have to go to when we move to the next house. H how many gallons is this big tank back here? 130. 130, yeah, that's pretty good. That's like a little bit more than double what we got right now. He's got them all strapped up there. You got some lighting so you guys Ooh, can that see castle. it well. So what's unique about uh, Paludarium is that it gives you an aquarium bottom and it gives you a place where to put your plants. Oh, it comes with a mister, so nice. In here, so included with the set comes the mister, comes all the sponges, and it comes with these really cool uh, sponges that you attach the plants to. Uh -huh. So it comes with the string as well. 
I knew it. Right in place. <laughs> I told you guys that's where they went. And then it's just strung around. That's cool. It's a lot easier if you do a start it up and set up your first knot. This is a geranium plant. This is a whole new world for me, guys. You got the little razors on there. So this uh, particular cool. plant. And that Kessel A80, or yeah, A80 is usually enough for like all sizes of tank. Yeah, you can use a Kessel, you can use a uh, twin star. You want to tailor it to what your, your scape's going to be. If you're going to have a lot of uh, low light plants, then you want something that you can actually cut back the intensity. Uh oh, the unveil unveiling. So I kind of pre assembled this. Oh, cool. Out of. Uh, a couple of different pieces. So this is um, Wolfstone from UNS. This is a decoration carry, and then I used uh, Black Forest wood, and I glued it to here. Super and cool. I will add some mosses along this to really make it look like it's a lost temple vine. And this is gonna be set up over here. So we'll have the fog floating over it and plants and it's something fun, right? Not not everything has to be so serious that it's like, oh, strictly plants if you're not doing this. A little Yoda fig. UNS conscious soil. The sand looks like rice. Mmm, I'm hungry. Usually you see Cypress Hill Fairy popping its head through the water in the wild. Uh, and I figured what better way than to put it really up close to there and have uh, the, uh, the flow of, of, of moisture keeping it wet but plant the roots in the good substrate medium. I love the little block things. You guys know I'm all about the easiest way to do things. Those things are nice. And those little tongs. You always see freshwater people using those little tongs. Is there a reason that you guys use, like I've always noticed freshwater aquascapers always use like the tweezers rather than just like using your fingers and putting it yes, in there? It's because with the substrate, you wanna go in there and you kind of shake it a little bit but to pull it out, uh, if you don't, your fingers are too big. Uh -huh. And when you're trying to get into a quarter of an inch or three quarters of an inch distance, your fingers would smush up everything. Uh, I like that. I'm gonna do some sort of like lost forest dungeon thing. That looks sick just like that. Add the fish. This is uh, called Borneo Fern and it likes a lot of moisture. It does not like to be submersed, but it doesn't like strong light. So I am on purpose hiding it back here, where mm. it's gonna get some filtered light and uh, get some shade. Petonias like uh, are better for more light and the leaves and everything likes to be stay drier. So I'm actually going to mount it up here. Are plants like corals and where like some can't touch each other and? No, plants don't get into chemical warfare, fortunately. <laughs> That's cool. Nubias in the wild will grow out of the water with a lot of moisture. So in greenhouses, they actually grow them above water. Look at that thing. And they keep them uh, moist. So the whole trick over here huh. will be to hopefully these will do okay with the moisture. And if that doesn't work, I may have to go and move them around. Ooh, right on the edge there. Boom. Oh yeah, this is looking cool. Gets set up pretty quick too. Water time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you in a bit. Oh wow, look how fast it fills up. Is this just like RO or no? This is RO mixed with alkaline buffer and general hardness equilibrium. That's completely rebuffered. So you, you have to do that with uh, well, fresh water? Well, we use RO here. So you could use tap water with the chlorinator. Oh, and the fog is on. So the mist will just stay on all the time? And that's what keeps the, the, uh, the terrarium plants hydrated. Oh, so you don't even have to like spritz them or nothing? No. So so what what is the, like, the maintenance on a tank like this? Um, fertilize and, and add, um, add water <clears throat> as it evaporates. Uh, you fertilize like the water and it just goes to the plants? Yeah, liquid fertilizer. Wow. Yeah, we love a low maintenance tank. Fresh water, you still have to cycle the water? Yeah. Is it, is it as long? 
It's on the planted tank. It's about two weeks. Man, this thing is that quick. Sick. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, and I love that the it's just like. Drip, right. dripping off the log. The fact that it's got these little holes for the fog to roll over is super clutch. There's mad fog building up behind this guy. You know, between a 50 and a 55 gallon, a 50 is only a three foot tank. I wonder if this would fog out my room. And look at the drip. I really like the drip. I don't know guys, maybe I end up getting this tank now. This thing is pretty sick. Definitely saw it and makes me want it now. Kind of I already like got this. the light. Oh yeah, I'm planning on getting a house with the We'll see. Woo! We learned something, you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Later. Let's